by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 180. Starting a holdup at the Unionized Company. Holdup's going on now. Hurry over. Rose and Cliff. Hey, wait a minute, Hop. 
Sloppy. We're in deep enough now. Take it easy. What's the matter with you? You going soft? No, I ain't soft. But a stick up one thing and chopping the guy's another. What do you want to do? Leave him here to give a load to the coppers on our look? Oh, I'll keep quiet, mister. Honest, I will. Yeah. The only guy that ever keeps it quiet is a dead one. Oh, no, I'll give you my word. I, I won't tell anybody. Yeah, come on, Hoppy. No use bumping this shit off. Let's win. Okay. Now, look. I'm letting you go, see? But I still think I'm a sap. Oh, no, sir. You're not. I- I'll keep quiet. Yeah, you'll keep quiet. Because if you don't, it's just going to be too bad. Remember, I'm telling you. Are you going to spend the night threatening this boy? Come on. Give your shirt on. Come on, let's go. At almost the same time in the evening, three men walk into the Glendale plant of the ice company. This time a lookout is posted at the door. Okay, pal, go on, get him up. Uh, you heard me, grab up. In case you don't know, these are guns we're pointing at, you see. This is known as a stick-up. Oh. Come on, come on, dumb guy, get him up ahead. Yeah, 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 sir. Get the cash left in. Yeah, what's the matter with you? Just come along and keep that guy... Shut up. Uh, come on, get that stuff and get out of here. Uh, what's the matter? You're getting awful little jumpy lately. What's wrong with you? Uh, nothing's wrong with me. We're pulling these jobs too fast, that's all. Uh, don't you like ice houses? Stick around. We'll make it a hotter for you. It's going to be hot for you if you don't watch that figure, Trinker. Stop trying to tell me how to do this job. I'm on this mob, see? Yeah, that's what you keep saying, but you don't seem to make them stick. Yeah? Well, why don't you try pulling out? All set. Okay, take a look outside and see if it's clear. It's okay. Now, listen to me, dumb guy. You stay right where you are for 15 a minute, see? Oh, yes, sir. And if you bet an eyelash, I'll come back and blow up the top of you. About a week later, G.H. Fry, General Superintendent of the Union Ice Company's office at 666 South Alameda Street in Los Angeles, nears the entrance to his plant when he sees a man come out of the door carrying a 25-pound piece of ice. Paying no particular attention to the man, he is about to walk on when he sees the man stop beside an alley and quickly toss the ice aside. Using, he enters the office. Hmm, that's strange. Never saw a fellow throw away a chunk of ice like that. Oh, Pop, come here a minute. Pop, did you see a tall man buying a piece of ice just now? Uh, Found it kind of sandy, huh? Uh, yes, uh, that's the man. Yeah, I saw it tell myself. Notice anything peculiar about him? Well, he's been in here a time or two before. Matter of fact, he came in yesterday, pretending to get a drink over there at the fountain. What do you mean, pretending? Just put his face down, didn't even wet his lips. Sort of waved his eyes around like a crab looking around a rock for a dead fish. Do you think he was looking the place over for some uh, particular purpose? I wouldn't pay much attention to it, except that he, almost as soon as he left, another fellow come in and did the same thing. That settles it. Remember that hold up in Glendale last month? Yeah. Some men did the same thing over there. What are you going to do? I'm going over to see Bill Traeger about it. Why, Sheriff Traeger? I've known him ever since he was a young fellow. He'll be able to give me the right kind of advice. Uh, you keep an eye on things till I get back. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I, I think I'll phone him first. <laughs> Try to see you, sir. Have him come in. Good morning, Bill. Well, what's this you were telling me over the phone? Sorry I had to cut you off, but we don't like to get much dope over the phone. Never can tell who's listening in. Is that so? Uh, that switchboard you're on. Sometimes things have a way of leaking out when we least expect it, and we like to be protected. Well, uh, this morning when I was coming into the office, I noticed a man just leaving the plant with a small piece of ice. Uh, I'd say 25 pounds. And I just happened to look back at him before I went inside, and I saw him flip the piece of ice up an alley. Uh, just like that. He didn't just set it down on the walk? No, he just flipped it down the alley like you would a bowling ball or something. Hmm, must have been a pretty strong fellow. What did he look like? He was not so tall. I'd say about five, eight or nine. He was pretty husky, though. Was he light or dark? He was very dark. Almost to foreign looking. Uh, one of the meanest looking men I ever saw. Sounds like a fellow we know is a hophead. Uh, that's a name that would fit him all right. Ever seen him before? No, but one of the boys at the Glendale plant said that one of the men who held up the office last month looked like that. Might be the same man. There was a short, dark man involved in the Oxnard plant to hold up, you remember? Yes, that's sir. Oh, this is beginning to look suspicious. Have you noticed anything else unusual going on around the plant lately? As a matter of fact, I have. I noticed a tall fellow who came in yesterday and pretended to get a drink of water, but he didn't. Didn't what? Uh, he didn't drink. I just put his face down over the fountain and didn't even wet his lips. That's funny. Notice anything else? Well, Pop Comfort said the same fellow that bought the ice this morning came in yesterday and did the same thing. Hmm, somebody's evidently 
mistaking the place for a holdup. Gosh, I, I hope not. Just about one more holdup, and the insurance company's going to cancel our policy. Uh, what day are your receipts the largest in the ice business? Tuesday is the day when we have the most money in the office. And today is Tuesday, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, they'll probably make a try for it tonight. What are we going to do? Now, don't worry. We'll take care of this. Did you report this to the police department? Oh, no, I thought maybe you could help me. After all, Bill, we've been friends for years. Oh, that's not it. I just asked for information. It's okay. I'll send a couple of the boys down to look the place over. I want you to stay out of this, though. You ring, sir? Yes. Ask Stensland and Moody to step in here a minute, please. Yes, sir. These men are two of the best men in the department. They'll go down and keep an eye on the office till this blows over. Or till we catch the crooks. Come in. Mr. Fry, Inspector Stensland and Inspector Moody. All right. All right. How do you do? Boys, Mr. Fry here is having a little excitement down at the Union Ice Company plant on Alameda Street. I want you to go over there, look the place over, and see if you think we can pick these crooks up if they try to start anything at all. I can help a lot, Bill. Oh, no, you won't. You'll stay out of it. I know how well you handle a gun and all that, but this job is going to be dangerous. We don't want any innocent bystanders getting hurt. Well, uh, we can't just walk out and leave the office vacant waiting for them to come in. No, that's right. We can't. Got anybody over there you can trust to let in on our little plan? We might tell Pop Comfort. No, no, no. I don't think he'd do. He'd be worse than you would about getting into trouble. No, we've got to have somebody who's calm and who won't get excited and start trouble. Well, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, I know just the man. Earl, my bookkeeper. Well, at least he looks like the logical man to have hanging around an office late at night. You think they'll try to do it at night? I figure they'll try to do the job just about closing time. Try, you explain all this to your bookkeeper and see that he does exactly as he's told. This may be a tough gang we're looking for. <laughs> Officer Stensland, and this is Mr. Moody. Earl's our bookkeeper. We thought it best to have one of the employees in on our plan rather than Mr. Fry here. Is there going to be shooting and everything? That's hard to say. Not even sure there's going to be a stick-up. We're pretty certain that this is the same bunch that held up the Glendale plant and the Oxnard plant. Look, why can't I stick around? No, Mr. Fry. We want you to stay away. We get paid to be shot at. I'd like to get just one shot at those bandits. Well, they're not bandits yet, Mr. Fry. At least we're not sure they mean to be bandits here. I heard voices outside. Oh, no, no, Earl. Uh, don't get worked up over this thing. Uh, just, just take it easy. He's right. Listen. Stansman, come over here by the window. Yeah. They're just below. Can you hear them? Sure. Hey, Mr. Uzi's the first day to pull this off. This plant's different from Glendale. You sure it ain't? Why? Oh, guess what it was or not. They're getting away bumping off. That's my mother. Yeah, that mother's going to backfire someday. Stand where you feet. I take care of me, all right. I still claim tomorrow's the best day, even if they were two dogs they go on Tuesday. Yeah, well, don't care what you think. You find out when the freight train is Tuesday here? Yeah, comes along just about the time they close this joint. That's the swell. That train will run out any noise we have to make. Are you sick of making any noise? Yeah, but that little bookie we got the smart, I'm going to let him have it. Remember that, Stanton. Yeah. We've got to watch out for that kid. Don't worry, we know what him. They won't hurt him. That's what I figured. That's why I want him in on it. I just hope they wouldn't bother him. Well, okay, have it your way this time. Maybe tomorrow would be better. And I have more money in there anyway. Yeah. That's it. I guess that's all for tonight. Uh, oh, Earl. Yes, sir? Apparently our friends have decided to wait until tomorrow night. About closing time to knock the place over. You go on home. You stick around a while longer in case they change the... And uh, if they don't come back, why, we'll be prepared for them tomorrow night. You run along, get her to sleep. Gee, Mr. Stensland, it'll be little enough tonight. I couldn't sleep if I had to. <laughs> sort of got you up in the air, have they, Earl? I'll say they have. Boy, this is the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah? You know, I've never done the things other fellas have, being crippled this way. And, and I guess I sort of miss the fun and excitement. Yeah, I know, Earl. Well, maybe you don't miss so much of that. Maybe you save a lot of energy some of us guys throw away. Oh, I don't really mind, only... Only sometimes it gets sort of, well, you know. Sure, I know, son. Stays along now. You've got to be on the job tomorrow, you know. All right, Mr. Stensland, if you think I should. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night, Earl. Kind of a brave kid at that, isn't he? Yeah. Hope nothing happens to him tomorrow night. I don't know. That hophead sounds like a pretty bird. Think we ought to wait till he makes a try at it or pick him up tonight? Well, we haven't got anything on him. If we pick him up tonight, we'll only have to turn him loose. Yeah, I suppose so. What about the kid, though? Wish we had somebody else to leave in here. Well, have that young 
Mr. Missy, only fun he ever had in his life? <laughs> Not a chance. Just the same, I'd feel better if he weren't going to be here. Benslin and Moody remained at the plant until after it closed. Finally, convinced that their men would not strike before the following day, they reported to Sheriff Traeger the outcome of the day's work. We stuck around the place until just a few minutes ago and decided it was all off for today. Nothing happened till late this afternoon. We heard voices under Fry's window, and that's when we got the tip that they're waiting until tomorrow. How many men were there? Four. A short, dark man they call Hop. Tall fella, slightly bald, older man. Yeah, I'd say about 45. A younger fella and a young kid. I'd say 18 or 19. Well, that's the trouble with gangers like that. There's always a youngster mixed up with a bunch of hardened criminals. Well, there's not much we can do about that. If he gets in with that sort of mob, he'll have to take the consequences. Oh, no question about that. Only if you can get by without anybody getting hurt, do it. I think we'd better take a couple of boys with us again tomorrow. We'll need somebody out in front as a lookout. We'll need somebody in the engine room... Let us know if they start in that way. We'll take all the men you need. But why the man on the street? That may tip them off. Uh, we can't see the Alameda Street side from Fry's office. Opens onto a side street. Bookkeeper's the only one who has access to the Alameda Street side. Is anybody a habit of hanging out in the main office? During the day, the usual office force is there, but we figure the gang will wait until everybody goes home before they try to knock over the place. And if there's any shooting to be done, do it first. The only thing that worries me is the bookkeeper. I'm sort of excited over this thing. I'm afraid he'll post some stunt that'll upset the apple cart. Well, if you think he'll get in your way, let's send him home. I'm leery of it myself. Uh, I think the kid's all right. Yeah? He's naturally keyed up over this thing, but he'll settle down before the fireworks start. In mid-afternoon of the following day, Stensland and Moody check in with Sheriff Traeger before going to the ice company plant. Have you decided on the men to take with you tonight? We're taking Harry Wright and Charlie Catlin. They're going to stay outside. We decided to put them in that old barn across the street from the ice company. They'll be out of sight there. Isn't that on the other side of the railroad? Yes, but that's the best place for them. Well, while you boys were out, Harry Wright was in and reported that he'd received a tip on this job. Got any names? Yes. Louis Rice, known as Lefty Louis, wanted by New York and Chicago police for bank robbery and hold up. Ed Merton, and incidentally, Merton's out on $10,000 bail right now. Huh. He's wanted in a half dozen places for robbery. He's also listed in the records as using the name of Mullen. Say, I remember him. We brought him in once before in connection with that car barn job, you remember? Isn't he the same one who's running around with Guilty? Is that the guy? Sure. Say, Guilty must be the hawk. Looks like you boys are in for a little plain and fancy roundup of some genteel cooks. Well, we're ready for them. We'll be looking down this road. Better be sure. They'll probably be throwing lead all over the place. Well, we're not in the habit of taking chances, you know that, Chief. Well, there may be a little bit of, well, for the want of a better term, curiosity. As to why we're handling this case from this office. But after what Harry told me today, it seems that it belongs here in as much as it's the same gang we are after on the car barn job and on the Glendale plant of Fry's Ice Company. Yeah, we better be getting on the job. It's getting late. What time do you figure they'll stick their neck in the trap? Sometime between 6 and 9. There's a freight train due along there about 6.30. A lot of switching's done along about 9. They'll fly it sometime about then if they miss the 6.30. Well, better pick up Harry and Charlie and get down to the plant. I'll be worried to death if you get there. Say, I'll bet that little bookkeeper wouldn't miss working tonight if they gave him the plan. Yeah, I'd feel a lot better if that kid weren't going to be there. Oh, he'll be all right if he just keeps out of the way and keeps quiet. Yeah, that's easy to say. But did you ever try to dodge a load of buckshot? Not yet. Never can tell when I'll have to start, though. Well, Denslin and Moody, together with three other officers, went back to the plan. As they had planned, Harry Wright and Charlie Cabin were stationed in a deserted barn across the street from the plant. Only Superintendent Fry and the bookkeeper knew of the prospective robbery. Late that afternoon, a driver is checking in with the bookkeeper. I'm telling you, them birds look nasty to me. Why, they've been around this block at least ten times since five o'clock. Well, you're just imagining things. It's probably some car that looks like the first one you saw. Listen, I might mistake the car, but I wouldn't mistake that guy that's driving why, it's the meanest looking bird I ever saw. What does he look like? Well, he's about my size, I reckon, and real dark. He's got a stubble beard, too. And boy, does he look like he'd beat his own mother. Well, what do the others look like? Well, one's an older man, I'd say about pop compass age. And the other two are just young fellas, but they're all plenty tough. Why, you're seeing things, Pat. There couldn't be four men as tough as that. Okay, okay, but don't say I didn't tell you. Hey, look. There they go again. Huh? See that car right across the street? That's the one. You're crazy, White. I've seen those fellas lots of times lately. Yeah, yeah. So have I. About a dozen times a day. 
doing the same thing they're doing right now. Oh, well, nothing ever happens around here. You better get cleared out, though, before Pop starts closing up. Hey, is it that late? Oh, I've got to get home. My old lady. Thought I'd never get him out of here. Oh, Mr. Moody, did you hear what he said? Yeah, I had the office door open a little. What did the man look like? Just like he said, tough and mean. Now, look, you stay as busy as you can. When they come in, don't get excited and start anything. If they get tough, well, we'll take care of them. I'm not excited. I'm, I'm just a little nervous. You know... Waiting and all? Yeah, we know. Moody and I will be in Fry's office here. We have the door open a little. You be ready. Don't try to do anything. Oh, I won't try anything, Mr. Stanton. Hey, quiet. Somebody's coming. Oh, that's right. You wanted to drive us. We'll duck out of sight. Get rid of them. Oh, hello, Brighton. How are you? Say, you can't sit around in the office. It's no. against the rules, you know. So what? What are you going to do about it? Why, why, nothing, I guess. Only, only what? Listen, you. I've already checked out. I'm waiting for my buddy, see? And I'll sit in here if I want to. Rules are made for guys like you. Now, pipe down, because I'm sleepy. Oh, you can't go to sleep. No, who says I can't? Mr. Fry said... I mean, you can't sleep here now. Listen, monkey, I'm going to sit right here, and I'm going to take a nap. And if you interrupt me again, I'm going to let you have one right on that funny kiss of yours. You get me? Yes, sir. All right. Only I wish you wouldn't right now. Uh,
the attempted holdup of the ice company plant was one bandit in custody, one so seriously wounded that he died in the hospital, and two killed at the scene of the crime. Another crime that did not pay. At the opening of Calling All Cars, I talked to you about the exclusive Sinclair refining process that makes Rio Grande cracked gasoline possible. For the production and refining of the world's finest motor oils, Sinclair processes are again responsible. Sinclair writes the laws of lubrication and fleets of ships, eight major airlines, 150 railroads, and millions of motorists in 45 nations of the world depend upon Sinclair oils for the lubrication of their motors. There are hundreds of oil companies, but Sinclair refines one out of every nine and a half gallons of oil sold in the United States. The secret of this success is the fact that Sinclair oils are refined from the highest priced crude oils in America and super refined, removing all the harmful wax and useless petroleum jelly found in many of the oils you buy. Sinclair oil will not break down in this summer heat. With Sinclair oils, your car will run longer and smoother and you'll save many dollars yearly. See your Rio Grande dealer tomorrow. Get police car performance with Rio Grande cracked gasoline and Sinclair eyes for safety with Sinclair motor oil. And oh yes, the new May issue of the Calling All Cars News is out. There are four true detective stories, movie and radio news, featured articles and pictures. You'll enjoy it, and it's free at your Rio Grande dealer. And now Major Green has a word for you. Every man connected with the gang about which we have heard tonight was a hardened criminal with one possible exception. Even that man was guilty of association with a group that could not be anything but an enemy of law and order. Here was a group of men with prison records, but prison had not rehabilitated them. They had not gone to jail to accept punishment for their misdeeds, but because they had not choice. Their one aim in life was to get out of prison as soon as they could so that they could commit more depredations on society. Subsequent actions by the surviving member of this gang proved conclusively that he was a criminal of the most ruthless and desperate tendencies. He received a sentence of 10 years in San Quentin prison. Once again, it is demonstrated that crime does not pay. Attention all car to cancellation broadcast 180 regarding a holdup. The facts in this case are now in custody. That's all. Holes and quits. Next week at this time, the intriguing story of John Doe, number 71. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande.